Hello and welcome. This video is about commissioning and working with the Viva Dual Mix PU460 Polyurea System. In a nutshell, we will show you with step-by-step -step instructions how to start up and operate this equipment. The Dual Mix PU460 is designed to apply solvent-free dual component materials such as polyurea and fast set polyurethane. This system allows the operator to coat large surface areas without having to worry about seams and joints. The basis for the instructions, tips, and suggestions in this video is the operating manual and the safety notes that will ship with your system. Ideally, you will have studied the operating manual in advance of viewing this video. Before starting, please observe all safety rules mentioned in the manual. Do not begin commissioning the system unless you have the specified protective equipment. Now let's take a look at the material you are planning to apply. Make certain that an adequate amount of coating material is available and has been stored properly. Always observe and follow the information concerning the handling of the coating found in the material manufacturer's technical data sheets. And it would be best to have two containers handy to collect excess coating. It is important to ensure the system is upright and level. It should be easy to reach all control elements. Also, check the ratings for the main power supply and air compressor to be sure that they are sufficient to operate the system. Here's an overview of the first important points. Study the operating manual. Use the specified protective equipment. Follow the safety notes in the operating manual. Observe the technical data from the respective material manufacturer. The unit must be upright and level. Adequate power and air must be available. In the next step, I'll tell you about the individual system components. This is the control box that includes the compressed air regulators and temperature control panel. You will find the switches for the main power supply, the heated hose package, the poly and ISO component heaters, and a selector for the desired heater wattage. The wattage selector is helpful if you do not require full heating power or if the available power supply is lower than the rating of the system. This is the touchscreen display that you use to control the system. As an option, the system can include a USB interface. This enables the download of system data to record usage on a specific job. The system is turned on by pressing the green on button. On the left, there are control lamps for monitoring phases 1 to 3 when using a three-phase power supply. If the system reports an error, you must correct it, then press the reset button to re-engage the unit. Here on the left-hand side, the compressed air pressure gauges can be found for the spray gun, feed pumps, and the main proportioner, as well as their respective regulators. Depending on the model chosen, Poly and ISO are drawn from 200 liter or 55 gallon drums using the optional diaphragm or piston feed pumps, or are filled into the optional 25 liter hoppers on the unit, or are drawn from 20 liter or 5 gallon pails via suction hoses. We recommend equipping the ISO component drum with a silica gel filter to prevent the material from reacting with ambient humidity and crystallizing. Each component is drawn or pumped by the feed pump into the proportioner and then dispensed at the rated mix ratio. If a different mixing ratio is required, this can be accomplished by simply adding an additional material pump to the proportioner and adding a few connection parts. After being dispensed by the proportioner, each component is heated separately to the desired working temperature by these fluid heaters. From here, each component travels separately through the outbound manifold and heated hose bundle to the plural component spray gun. The individual components do not come into contact with each other until reaching the gun. Now you've got a first impression of the Viva Dual Mix PU460. Let's look at how to commission and start up the system. For transportation purposes, various components of the unit were removed and packed in a separate cardboard box. This includes the heated hose package and the optional spray gun. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the hose package to the outbound manifold on the pump. First, check that the hose package has the proper rating. 
To do this, compare the data plate on the hose package with that of the Viva Dual Mix PU460. The operating voltage of the hose package is also defined by the plug of the temperature sensor. 2 pin for 400 volt and 7 pin for 230 volt. To ensure that the hoses are assembled properly, ISO and poly hoses have different thread sizes. You connect the compressed air for the spray gun to the bottom fitting. Also, connect the plugs for the temperature sensor and for the hose package heat trays. The hose package can be composed of several hose package segments up to a maximum of 138 meters or 400 feet in length. You can easily recognize the order of the fluid hoses when connecting the hose package segments by the different thread sizes. Note that the plugs for the temperature sensors and the hose package heat trays are arranged opposite one another. After connecting the individual hose package segments, we recommend wrapping the connection with tape and protect it using a shrink sleeve. Now, connect the spray gun to the hose package like this. Connect the blue coated hose to the polyol side of the gun manifold and the red coated hose to the isocyanate side of the gun manifold. At the factory, we use mesomol as a testing medium, which is in all the wetted components of the system at delivery of the dual mix PU460. If you use a material that is incompatible with mesomol, we recommend flushing the entire system with a flushing agent that is compatible with the material that you are using before filling the system with the components that you intend to spray. Open the bung hole and the air inlet on the material drums and insert the feed pumps into the material drums. Ensure correct component allocation at all times. Red for the ISO component and blue for the poly component. Ensure that the feed pumps are mounted upright without tilt and are securely positioned. We recommend lubricating the threads with Vaseline. If the system is fitted with optional circulation fittings, run the return hoses into the material drums first and secure them to avoid accidental slippage when bleeding the system. When doing this, ensure correct component allocation at all times. I'll show you how to bleed the system later on. If you have a system with the circulation option, we recommend using the silica gel filter mounting kit for feed pumps with return hoses. If you are using the PU460 without circulation, we recommend the silica gel filter for feed pumps without return hoses. Important, before every commissioning, always check the fill level of each throat seal liquid container. There must be 200 milliliters or seven ounces present. In the next step, we will connect the inbound air to the unit. First of all, ensure that all the pressure regulators in the system are at zero. After this, attach the inbound air hose to the unit, ensuring that a minimum hose diameter of one inch and a minimum inbound air pressure of four bar or 60 PSI is available. Also, observe the maximum operating pressures for all system components. Now we must consider a very important step. All fluid hoses and the proportioner must be filled with the components you intend to apply. Set the system's master switch to on. When using a three-phase system, check whether control lamps L1 to L3 are lit up. These control lamps indicate whether all three phases of the power supply are available. If they are not, check the available power supply. Switch the system on by pressing the green button. If the system is fitted with the optional circulation fittings, hold the return hoses in the empty containers to collect the mixture of testing medium and coatings material. Adjust the air pressure for the spray gun to around 5 to 6 bar or 72 to 87 PSI. Now open the compressed air ball valve and the optional outbound ball valves on the feed pumps and adjust the feed pumps air pressure regulator on the control box to approximately 6 bar or 87 PSI. The air inside the system must be pressed out slowly, so don't apply any pressure to the proportioner yet. In a system without circulation, dismount the inbound manifold from the spray gun, open the outlets and hold the manifold over an empty container. Once clean, bubble-free material exits the manifold, close the manifold outlets and remount the manifold on the spray gun.
When using very long hose packages, the feed pumps may not be sufficient to push the coating alone. In this case, you must run the proportioner at the same time at low air pressure. The fluid hoses and the proportioner are now filled with material. Check that the entire system is free of any leaks. If there are leaks, tighten the corresponding fittings to eliminate them. The next step is to open the regulator on the maintenance unit for de-icing the air motor. The de-icing may stay open over the lifespan of the equipment. Now let's briefly summarize the last few steps. Check whether the system and the hose package are rated for the same operating voltage. Connect the hose package in accordance with the correct component coating. Connect the spray gun to the hose package. Flush the system with flushing agent as recommended by the material manufacturer. Place the optional feed pumps in the material drums. Ensure that the components are assigned correctly and that the pumps are securely positioned. Check the levels of the throat seal liquid in the two containers. Connect the inbound air hose. Fill the proportioner and hose package with the coating components. Check that the entire system is free of leaks. On the air maintenance unit, open the regulator for de-icing the air motor. This completes commissioning. The system is now ready for operation. Before starting actual coating, always observe the data sheets and warnings of the respective coatings manufacturer. Roll out the hose package completely and set the desired spray temperature using the touchscreen display. I'll show you how the display works first so you can set the temperature. After switching on the system, the display shows the welcome screen. To the right of it, there are the buttons F1 to F5 that you use to navigate through the menus. Pressing F3 always takes you back to the welcome screen. In the other menus, the system may display different symbols in the top right hand corner. An exclamation mark indicates that there is a malfunction in the system. If you press the F5 button, you can display this message. A letter H indicates that the system is in manual mode and that pressure differential monitoring is deactivated. The A stands for automatic mode. Pressure differential monitoring is activated. If you can see a letter P at the top right, the system is in the parking position. Now let's start with the menus that you can go through by pressing F1. The first time that you press the button, you can see a maximized view of the current temperatures of both components. This means that you can always see the temperature even if you are far from the unit. To allow you to differentiate easily, Poly has a blue background and ISO has a red one. Pressing F1 again calls the next status screen, in this case the system status. There, the system clearly displays the actual and set point values for the temperature and pressure of both components. If you press F1 again, this takes you to the temperature settings where you can specify the set point temperatures for each component and for the hose package. The stroke counter is next, which displays the total and daily volumes of applied coating. You can reset the counters by pressing the reset key. In this menu, you can run the system to the parking position. I'll explain when this is necessary later on. In the subsequent menus, you can set the language, adjust the brightness of the display, and save the data log to a USB stick using the optional USB interface. Pressing the F1 key again takes you back to the first screen. If you press F2, you get back to the previous menu. Pressing F3 always takes you back to the welcome screen that you have just seen. Using the F4 key, you can get to different menus in which it is possible to change important basic system settings. You can find more information concerning these screens in the operation manual. Since the fluid heater's set point temperatures are reached sooner than those of the hose package, use the switch on the control box to first switch on the heating for the hose package and then the heating of the two fluid heaters. If the heaters are set to half power, the switches will blink alternately. Once the set temperatures have been reached, the lights go out. To achieve optimum spraying results, the entire system, including the hose package, must be heated to the preset temperatures before spraying. 
The switch is only light when the heaters are engaged. Here's an important piece of advice for equalizing the pressure of both components. Due to the differences in the material characteristics of the ISO and the poly component, the pressure in the system may have increased differently during the heating phase. For optimum results, we recommend a maximum pressure difference of 10 to 20 bar or 150 to 300 psi between the components. To do this, dismount the inbound manifold from the spray gun and carefully open the valve of the component displaying the higher pressure until the pressure has been equalized. Drain excess material into a container. After the pressure has been equalized, close the valve again and remount the manifold to the spray gun. Now set the desired spray pressure, unlock the spray gun, and start spraying on a test area first. If necessary, adjust the individual temperatures and the spray pressure. Here is a summary of operating the system again. Roll out the hose package completely. Set the desired temperature for the fluid heaters and hose package. Turn on the hose package and fluid heaters. Equalize the pressure of both components. If taking a short break while working, you don't need to do anything. Just leave the system as it is. If the interruption in work will last several hours, for example overnight, you must run the system to the parking position. If the pump will be out of service for several days or longer, you should empty the remaining poly and ISO from the system and fill it with an appropriate storage medium as recommended by the coatings manufacturer. Never allow the system to run empty and do not use solvents. I'll now show you how to activate the parking position. Keep pressing F1 on the touchscreen until the parking menu is displayed and activate standby mode for the unit by pressing the on push button. The arrows indicate the current direction of travel of the proportioner. In parking position, the proportioner remains at the lowest point of travel in the air motor, keeping the fluid pump pistons immersed in either coating or storage medium. To do this, you must trigger the spray gun. While approaching the parking position, you are asked to check the material pressure of both components. If the system displays parking in position, you have reached the parking position. The display shows a letter P in the top right hand corner. Reduce the material pressure to approximately 50 bar by triggering the spray gun. Then close the manifold valves on the spray gun to hold the residual pressure in the hoses. If the system is to be decommissioned for a relatively long period, you must carry out the following additional work. Switch off the heating and regulate the air pressure regulators of the proportioner all the way back. Switch off the system at the master switch. The system remains pressurized to avoid crystallization of material in the material hoses. The feed pumps remain in the drums or are stored for transportation in the receptacles filled with throat seal liquid. Ensure that the receptacles for the feed pumps are always filled to 25 millimeters or one inch below the top edge with throat seal liquid. If the feed pumps or suction hoses are removed from the drums, you must close the bung holes and the air inlet on the lids. Then disconnect the inbound air supply. As I said, the unit is not completely emptied in the case of short-term shutdown of the system. If required, the coatings components can be replaced with a storage medium recommended by the coatings manufacturer. Do not use solvents under any circumstances. In the case of a long-term shutdown, observe these steps as well as those found in your operation manual. Always remember, only Viva technicians or trained personnel are allowed to carry out maintenance and repair work on the Viva Dual Mix PU460. For trouble-free commissioning of the unit, we recommend that you have on hand the following tools which are not included in the standard toolkit. This is a great deal of information to take in, but it should make it easier for you to carry out your daily work with the Viva Dual Mix PU460. If you need any more information, please contact our headquarters in Lanao.